Good afternoon, folks, and a very good morning to our friends on the West Coast. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. My name is Sean, and I head the Enrollment Solutions team at Lead Squared. I will be your co-host today. To outline my work, Lead Squared is an enrollment management solution for the Ambitious Career School. We say ambitious because it's a complete system in all traditional senses, but its real novelty lies in automation that we found helps schools control costs and keep student engagement very high all through the enrollment cycle. With us leading the presentation, we have Mr. Bart Kaler. Bart and his marketing consulting, Kaler Solutions, have been in the industry for over 20 years. He has been helping schools of all sizes, strategies, and spends. I will let Bart introduce his work further and especially the part related to our topic today. We'll have all the questions in the end. If you please look around your screen, you'd spot a button that says questions. Please click on that and type everything you want to be discussed in there. I will read it out aloud in the end for everyone to hear. Thank you. So Bart, I'll let you take this away now. Hope you guys have a good time. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate the opportunity to be here with everyone. <clears throat> uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining. I know I've got several friends that have uh, logged in um, from, from other times that I've made this presentation, so thanks for coming back and joining us today. Um, as Sean mentioned, I have been a part of education marketing for the better part of 20 years. Had the opportunity to, uh, to get into that early. Uh, my background has been in um, has been more in a corporate setting. Uh, I've done a lot of work for uh, organizations like AT&T and NCR and IMS Pet Food and uh, various types of organizations over the years. But about 20 years ago, I had an opportunity to get into education. And so uh, Kaler Solutions has kind of born out of that. For the last nine years, we have been focused entirely on education marketing. And so we do a lot from the uh, enrollment side as well as the development side with uh, giving and campaigns. Most of the work that I do is with smaller private schools, so uh, community colleges, career schools, uh, Bible colleges, seminaries, small liberal arts colleges. So I know that probably represents a lot of what we have here today. And one of the things that I constantly have with uh, challenges from my clients is how can I do more with less? And so that's really what came, uh, why this uh, webinar and this presentation came about was to help you understand that, that there are ways to do effective school marketing, even if you have a very small budget. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so that's really the main thing that I wanna make sure that I communicate to you today is that your school can do effective education marketing period. It, you really, I hear so many people whine that, well, I'm not as big as that school. Uh, I don't have as many opportunities as that other school. And really, you know, today we're going to just really focus on what it is that we do have and not what we don't have. So I really don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts about it. But we'll kind of go through and talk about the things that you do have and how to use those more effectively. And so one of the things that I really like to try to really look at at the very beginning of all these presentations is to make sure that we all understand and we start from a, a standard point. I kind of look at it as like a three-legged stool. You really have to have these three things to do effective education marketing. You have to have an enrollment focused website. So, um, you know, that's that's first and foremost, uh, the majority of people, I don't really care what kind of school it is, they're using your website to, uh, you know, authenticate what they've heard about your school and to find out if it will be a good fit. They're also going to use the content on that website that's going to answer the questions that they have. So everyone approaches the web with questions. We all go to Google, we all go to other search engines looking for the answers to our questions, whether it's about a particular artist that we want to listen to or whether it's a uh, piece of uh, something that we want to buy. We always start trying to find the answers to our questions. And then we also need to make sure that we have an effective social media strategy. And the idea is that we're using social media to drive prospective students and their parents to that content that's on the website. And so really social media is more about building those relationships and driving uh, individuals and users to the content that we have on our website. I also like to start every session that I do with this idea of dealing with constant change. There might be things that I say today that you maybe have heard me talk before uh, that might change. Whenever we talk about digital uh, media, and especially in enrollment marketing and, and anything that has to do with a younger generation, uh, there's too many times that we um, need to change what we're doing because the audience changes or different elements of what we're doing changes. And so I like this quote from Yoda that you must unlearn what you have learned. The idea that we have to 
be willing to change. We have to be willing to pivot from what we have always done to do something new. And so a lot of what we're going to be talking about today might sound new to you, and it might be something that you haven't tried before, but I think that unlearning maybe what you thought always worked before and embracing something that might work now is one of the skills that we need to all have as, as good marketers. So one of the first keys that I want to point out is that marketing on a limited budget takes creativity, it takes discipline, it takes a level of scrappiness, and a willingness to be okay with authenticity over perfection. And I'll, I'll kind of just make a note of that, that there's, there's all kinds of data online, and this one comes from Fast Company, but Generation Z has the strongest BS filter of any previous generation because they've grown up in an era where information was available at all times. It, it's been ubiquitous. So, you know, they talk about Generation Z as the true digital native. They, they do not know anything different. My, my kids are all Generation Z. My oldest is a freshman this year in college. He has never known a world that he could not go and ask dad to look something up on Google to get an answer. Information has just always been available and it's everywhere and he can get it at any moment. So it's a different paradigm for us to think about the fact that we don't have to be perfect in what the information that we're sharing. We have to be authentic and make sure that they understand the authenticity that we have in our school because they can find the information. They want to build that authentic relationship. So the number one way to market with a shoestring budget or a thin budget or a very small budget is with content. And content makes you and your organization the authority on whatever you choose to publish. And so I've got a, a couple examples here, but that key right there is that your content is going to make you and your school the authority on whatever you choose to publish and whatever you choose to talk about. You are going to be answering the questions of those students, those prospective students, the parents, whatever the influencer is, you're going to be the one answering those questions. And because you're answering those questions, you are going to become the authority and the expert. And per dollar spent, content marketing will generate three times the number of leads than any paid search that you might do. So I know a lot of you are probably investing heavily in Google pay-per-click or Facebook ads or Instagram ads. Research has shown over and over that content marketing done well is going to generate a lot more leads and more authentic leads than your paid search might. Now, paid search certainly has a way, has a, a fit in this content marketing, but just paid search alone is not going to generate the leads that content marketing can. And content marketing also drives a higher conversion rate than traditional marketing. So it's going to be six times more conversions than you would get in traditional marketing. And I love this quote from Jay Baer. He's the author of Utility. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, I would highly encourage you to pick it up. Success flows to organizations that inform, not the organizations that promote. And so a lot of what I'm going to be talking about when we look at content marketing and doing it on a budget and using tools that are going to be uh, leverageable for a, a small budget is going to be based on the fact that you are going to be the one that is going to be able to inform people and not necessarily promote. And again, examples that I want to show you with how you can become the authority. This is a great example of a small uh, school. It's a small Bible college in Oklahoma City called Heartland Baptist College. They actually put together a book, a very small self-published book called The Case for a Bible College. And they have part one, why a Bible college, and part two, how do I prepare, and includes a bonus chapter, which is why Heartland Bible College is all, is what, what about Heartland? Why it's all about Heartland Bible College being the place to go. I love this because the fact that they have claimed this, that they have claimed that they know why the case for this Bible college they are the ones who are the experts on how to prepare. And it just happens to be the fact that that school is where this expertise is, is held. And so I love this because it's a, it's a really good example of how content can really propel you to be the expert in this just because you've claimed that and you've claimed that space. Another example is, uh, is from my own business. Um, I published a, um, a blog article that was about, um, it was about, how students react to online um, websites. And what's interesting is that this book, um, this Valentine and Richards, these two authors, found my blog more than likely because of a Google search. And I, I ranked higher in the Google search than anyone else. I was ranked number one with this particular keyword set. But what they said, and I got footnoted in this book as the authority, 
They said college admissions provides a good example. If you were charged with selling a college to prospective student body, you would assume that your greatest assets would be the campus itself, the manicured lawns, the ancient trees, the frisbees, the lake. Yet Kaler Solutions recently released a summary of key points from a student survey conducted with users of Chegg, an online textbook provider, and Uversity, a higher ed data and communications platform. Here's what they found. 79% of students reported they would dro drop a school from consideration if their experience of the school's uh, website did not meet their standards. And 97% of the students reported that they consumed the websites via mobile device. What I think is interesting about this is that even in the even in the citation that they gave, they pointed out the fact that I released a summary of some key points from someone else who did the survey, Chegg and Uversity. This is actually the blog post that I did. I created a, an infographic and I basically said, this came from a Uversity and Chegg student survey. The complete deck can be downloaded directly on the Uversity site, but we thought a quick overview would be helpful. Well, because of that, because I claimed the authority through the infographic because I claimed the authority through my blog post and because Google suggested that I was the authority on it, I became the authority. So this piece of content helped me become the authority on digital marketing for higher education and how students are reacting to websites for schools. Even though you might argue that it wasn't my study, I did not spend tens of thousands of dollars on this study, but I have been recognized as the authority on that study because of the way it has been presented the way that I utilized content. So you can claim your authority. And this is just an example for the Bible college that we've talked about. I mean, you can claim your authority based on subjects. So whether you are a Bible college, whether you're a cosmetology school, whether you're a trade school uh, dealing in welding, you can claim that authority of that subject, whatever that subject is, don't be shy to claim your authority in that. And so for this example, that maybe a school claims their, their expertise in scripture as their authority. Maybe your cosmetology school claims the fact that you are, um, you, you, you know, are utilizing new styles and, and you've got a different way of doing things. So you can really pull these different elements, whether it's scripture or apologetics or type of ministries for Bible schools or whether it's styles or ways that you interact with your clients or the service that you provide, all of those things are elements for you to claim your authority. Another place to find those authority things are in a place called Google Trends. You can go there and actually go online and learn more about Google Trends and find out what are those things that people are talking about that they want to find an authority on. You can also claim your authority on your location, or maybe it's your methodology or the approach that you uh, do in the way that you uh, deliver your school, you deliver your education. And maybe it's your individuals, maybe it's uh, certain people that are in your school, maybe it's a certain stylist that you have as a professor, maybe it's a, a president that is in your, in your small uh, university or school. There are a lot of ways that you can claim that authority and be effective. So here's the, here's the heart of how I wanna go through the rest of this presentation. What I have done is I basically said, if I had $10 per day for the 250 working days in a year, what would I do with $2,500 of a marketing budget? How would I, what would I purchase to help me do more effective content marketing? And so we're gonna go through this and I'm gonna kind of keep track of this. So the first thing that I would do is I would leverage and utilize this tool called BombBomb. BombBomb.com is an interactive video email. Uh, it can be used for both admissions and it can be used for development. But what it does is it allows you to give a personal touch for Generation Z. And that's important because video is the language that Generation Z um, reacts to. Even some of the, the younger alumni, uh, younger millennials are really gonna be affected by video. And so it's really gonna be able to give you a personal touch. What you do with BombBomb is you, whether you're in Gmail or Outlook, you press, you open up an email, you press a button, you record a short uh, video. It automatically creates one of these three second animated GIFs, drops it in, pr quick, pr pr provides a link for the end user, and you can send out your email with a little brief um, statement. I have found it very effective. The, the open rates and the engagement rates are tremendous. And I think that it also um, is, is something that can really be used for some of the more sticky places in the admission cycle. You know, as Sean pointed out, Lead Squared is a great tool that can allow you to do some, some automation. And a reminder to send an automated email out with video is, is a really good tool that you can leverage. Um, BombBomb is quite affordable. It's about $500 per admission seat um, per year. 
And so you can really kind of leverage this and, and, and really kind of create that authentic connection that, that these audiences are looking for. So that would be the first place that I would invest in. The second one is this um, 360 degree camera. It's called a Theta 360. It's made by Rico. You can do create a virtual campus tour. You could do a explainer video. Um, uh, virtual reality applications are coming up. And so utilizing a tool like this that you can create a video, uh, I've had several schools that have done a quick uh, campus tour just by putting this on a selfie stick, walking around campus and giving a, a typical tour, but it allows the end user to be able to rotate the video and see the entire um, the entire surroundings, much like if they were walking on a tour, they could obviously look everywhere that that they could without being forced to just look in one direction. So these these cameras are wonderful. They're really good to be able to create these campus tours. I've had several schools, and I've got a post of my blog that actually teaches you how to use this this camera, create a campus tour, and then upload it to Google and actually have it show up on Google Maps for your campus. And so if that's something that you need, um, you can you can reach out to me later and I'll send you a link for that. The next thing is utilizing a selfie stick, $22. We're down to $16.51 on our balance, but uh, you can use this with, with the camera. You can use it with smartphone recordings. Um, you can see that, you know, in that top circle on the right, you know, there's a little clip there to put your smartphone. One thing I'd want to let you know is that the today's smartphones are, um, more powerful and better quality than what you could buy 10 or 15 years ago with a broadcast studio. You have, you'd have to spend $40,000 on a professional video a few years ago. Your camera today can have very much the same types of quality and technical, technical um, expertise that you can get several years ago, but you can do it right out of your pocket. So don't under underestimate the, the value of the tools that you might already have at your disposal. The next thing that you can do for your camera is to buy a stabilizer and a mic. Uh, you know, you can use these with smartphone recordings. You can really create a very professional video and audio uh, feel. Uh, you know, this little boom mic that can mount onto this, um, this tripod or onto this stabilizer can really go far. That combination will set you back about $200. Uh, but this next video will show you a little bit about it. Introducing the all new Smooth 4, the revolutionary handheld gimbal born for mobile filmmakers. Here's how Smooth 4 can transform your mobile videos into a Hollywood masterpiece. Use the unique hand wheel and hotkeys for precise control of all your camera settings without touching your phone. Smooth zooming and precise focus by using your follow focus hand wheel. Smoothly zoom in and out or hit the follow focus button and you can control the focus manually. Use phone go mode for instant scene transition. Intuitive one click mode switch. Our most powerful handheld gimbal compatible with phones of all size. For the first time, mobile filmmakers can perform a film-level vertical shot with your phone. Shoot in beautiful slow motion, easier and smoother than ever. Object tracking with Smooth 4 is a breeze. Simply frame up the object you want to track on, and Smooth 4 will do the rest. Using AI technology, Smooth 4 is a time-lapse and hyperlapse expert, featuring the most comfortable handle grip with hammer paint texture. Over 10 hours of battery life with an easy-to-see battery indicator on the side and the unique clip design keeps Smooth 4 compact while traveling and ready for action. Smooth 4 turns your mobile phone into a professional filmmaking camera, allowing you to create cinematic masterpieces without the hard budget. Smooth 4, born for mobile filmmakers. So that's just a really good example of, of how you can utilize a, a tool that is out there for a very low budget, utilizing your own camera to really do some high level, high quality types of content for your for your school. Uh, the next thing is this Lavier mic. Uh, you can use it with smartphone recordings and other cameras. It's, it's actually a professional sound for, for videos. And so the idea is that for $30, you can plug this into your jack on your uh, phone, your smartphone, and pin it to somebody's lapel. And you can actually have a really high quality um, audio to interview for testimonials, for outcomes, for just small little videos that you can leverage on, on in content that you can leverage on social media or on your website. A light kit is really important. Um, Wistia has a great video that I'm going to show you in a moment that just kind of shows you how for about $100, just using some Home Depot materials, you can really transform the way that you do your videos on campus without really breaking the bank and without having to rely on a professional crew to come in. And so, you know, we're, our balance is down to about 13, 17, but let me show you this video just so you can get an idea of what it is that you can do just with some, just some intuit, 
intuitiveness and, and some scrappiness. Oops, let me go back. Hey, I'm Chris from Wistia, and this is the DIY lighting kit. In this video, I'll break down how we put this kit together with no tools for less than 100 bucks. We went to Home Depot and scoured the aisles, trying to find the best stuff to build a down and dirty lighting kit for shooting video. There are a lot of lighting options at Home Depot, but here's what we picked up. Three clamp lights, a pack of daylight color balanced LED bulbs, three spring clips, three extension cords, a shower curtain, and some clothes pins. This shopping list ran us about 60 bucks, but it's missing a key ingredient, light stands. The closest thing I could find at Home Depot to a light stand was this lawn sprinkler tripod, but it's expensive, it's made for watering lawns, and it's just not tall enough. So we picked up three of these inexpensive light stands from Amazon. Here's how to get things set up. There are a ton of bulb options at Home Depot. Look for bulbs that are daylight balanced at 5,000 Kelvin, have a high color rendering index, and are dimmable. I tested a bunch of different bulbs and found that these Cree 60 watt bulbs look the best. The nice thing about the clamp lights is that they can be mounted pretty much anywhere, but use a spring clip to securely attach it to the top of a light stand. Take the shower curtain and cut out two 12 inch squares. Then use your clothespins to attach them to the front of two of the lights. This will help to create a softer, more flattering light. All right, here we are with just the ambient lighting in our office. With some basic lighting technique, we'll clean this shot up and put our new lighting kit to work. Let's start by trying to get some nice, even light on my face. So we'll use two lights to do this. All right, things are looking brighter, but the lights are too low. It's most flattering to place your lights just above your subject's eye line, about three feet apart from each other. All right, we're looking better, but the light is still a little bit too harsh. So to soften it up, let's grab that shower curtain diffusion material and clip it to the front of these two lights with the closed pins. All right, we're all lit up and ready to go. Here's what our lighting looked like before. And here's with our DIY lighting. Now let's get this set up into a makeshift studio. Shooting someone standing right up against the solid background is going to look pretty rough. We need to create a separation between the subject and the background. So to fix this, let's move the entire setup back by about four feet. Now to take care of these nasty shadows behind me, let's take our third light, move it right behind the subject and point it at the background. Mm, this is looking good. Now, just because you're hacking together a DIY lighting kit doesn't mean you still can't get fancy. If you've got an extra 25 bucks to spend at Home Depot, here are some upgrades you can consider. These plastic scoop lights are five bucks more each, but they have stronger clips and they are way more durable. To give yourself even more light control, pick up some higher wattage bulbs and this lamp dimmer. Plug the dimmer into the two lights pointing at your subject, and you can adjust the amount of light hitting your talent. Just make sure you get bulbs that are actually dimmable, or else your lights will flicker as you dim them down. So, there's the DIY lighting kit. Now get out there and build your own. Okay, so that's that's just a really good idea of how to, how to do something. Um, again, scrappy, but very professional looking. So again, this is just, you know, to add to what he said, kind of a makeshift studio. You can take a, an empty classroom or an empty office that you have and just turn that into a makeshift studio that you can bring in students to do uh, testimonial interviews, bring in a professor to, to ask some questions. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to do that. For $126, you can, you know, grab some of this stuff on Amazon with the backdrop. Uh, just kind of gives it very, very easy to do this. Um, you know, do grab some paper, some cloth, an instant studio in, in an unused room is really the way I would go. Um, for nothing, you can get download iMovie or Clips uh, or, or similar options on Android. Uh, you're going to be able to do simple vid videography. You can use the smartphone as an app. Again, being able to generate more and more video content, I think, is one of the keys. Uh, this is a tool called Mevo. It's going to set you back about $250. It allows you to do live streaming broadcasts. You can do it on Facebook Live. Um, it's multiple cameras in one. You can control it from the smartphone, but the idea is that you can, you know, create these different uh, scenes and you can pre-program it. So let's say that you've got a convocation or a chapel or, 
or a, an event that you're going to be hosting, well, you can set that up and be able to highlight different parts of the scene, whether it's uh, maybe it's a panel where you've got four people talking and you can pre-program each of the Zoom features for the different panelists. And then as the broadcast is live streaming, just by interacting with your phone, you can cut to the different people and make it look very professional, almost like you've got a, an entire, you know, four camera studio going on. And so that's a that's a really nice tool to, to leverage, if you, especially if you have those type of events that you can uh, create content from. Uh, a Blue Yeti mic, I think, is just necessary. It's actually what I'm using today to do this uh, this um, broadcast. Uh, you can do podcasts, voiceovers, uh, webinars, screencasts. It'll set you back about $129, but because it's USB, it's portable, uh, it gives you really good quality sound and professional sound at a very uh, affordable price. You can also upload all of your audio to SoundCloud and have that discovered much like you would on YouTube, having those pieces of content discovered outside of your website or outside of your content, uh, social media. A WordPress blog, I think, is one of the main ways that you can really get a lot more traffic to your website. Uh, for $150, you can host it on a place like a SiteGround. Uh, and I would basically sit down with your admissions team and say, what are the top 50 questions that people ask us about our school or our type of school? You know, what are the type, you know, what are the questions that they ask? Is it, is it what are the best careers that I can get by going to a cosmetology school? What do I need to do beyond that? Um, you know, what's the difference between this degree and that degree? If you just took those top 50 questions that people asked and you turned those into a 500 word essay um, with some keywords and put those into a blog, you're going to have a year's worth of blog content. Um, you can automate that with, and make it into a newsletter with a tool like MailChimp. And it's really going to be the best search engine optimization that you can have. You're going to rank very high because you're simply answering the questions that people have. And so I have found time and time again, not only with my own business, but with a lot of schools that we work with, is by doing the simple process of answering those questions and doing it in a blog form, Google will reward you and make you very high in the rankings and, and you'll, you'll actually do quite well and get a lot of leads. Talked about MailChimp for a year with a nonprofit discount. You can get it for you know, $213. You can do email distribution, newsletter automation. But the fact that using a tool like Lead Squared, you could start subtracting some of this stuff out of your budget because Lead Squared will allow you to do a lot of this already without having to rely on a tool like MailChimp. You can actually just program a lot of the, the content right out of uh, Lead Squared and create that automation, create that content flow that is going to be important to your schools, to, to your prospective students. But if you don't have a tool like Lead Squared, you have to do a little bit more work and a tool like MailChimp can, can come in handy. But the thing I love about a tool like Lead Squared is even if you wanted to keep using MailChimp, especially for that blog automation, uh, because Lead Squared is, is part of a larger ecosystem like Zapier, you can push data in and out of, of Lead Squared into MailChimp and into other tools that uh, you might be leveraging for other reasons. And so, again, another way to get your content out there. Snagit is a great tool to just be able to capture screencasts or to be able to capture um, different explainer videos. I always like to do a quick little video of the application, of what it's going to take to do an application, how to how to use the net price calculator if you have one. Uh, screencast, you know, you can create a quick little screencast with Snagit using a, a, a nice Yeti mic and have something very professional that you can post on your website or on social media to just give people assurance of what it takes to do the next step in your uh, admissions funnel. The next thing is a, a little secret that I use, pictochart.com. Uh, I showed you earlier about the infographic that I created. I actually created it on, in, on pictochart.com. And for $40 a year, you have access to a ton of different templates to be able to create those infographics or those explainer graphics for your own website to show outcomes, to show percentage of your you know, graduates who are working in their career, what they end up doing. And so uh, Pictochart can allow someone who's not a designer and someone who's not a you know, doesn't know how to use Photoshop or Illustrator, gives them a set of tools and templates they can actually create some good content through the form and deliver it through the form of an infographic. And infographics are very popular on social media, on your website. It's just a way to really consume a lot of information very quickly. Uh, for, for no money, you can do a lot of syndication. So on my own website, I publish a weekly blog like I've talked about, but I also syndicate that then to LinkedIn, to Medium, 
Sometimes I'll put it up on uh, YouTube uh, in the form of a video. Uh, you can also do things like um, find uh, very niche type of uh, websites that are dying for additional content. So there's a, there's a website called Ed Social Media. It's how to use social media for education schools. And so I will republish a lot of my content on those different sites and actually find a lot more traffic on those sites and a lot more consumption of my content in that syndicated form than even on my original form. But what it does is people discover me on Medium and it drives them back to my website to learn more about me. And that's the same type of thing that you could do, especially if you are syndicating those questions that people have about your school or your type of school, become the authority and syndicate that to the different places out online. Automation, um, when you do social media, when you do different types of content, it's important to automate a lot of that, especially for smaller uh, departments, marketing departments. You can use a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer to be able to schedule social media. I use a tool called CoSchedule combined with um, WordPress that allows uh, a social media announcement to go out every time a blog post is done and it automatically does it one day, three days, five days, seven days, 14 days, two months, six months, it will republish that content into my social media channels. That's all automated so that I don't have to worry about continuing to get that content out there. These tools will allow me to do that. Um, Feedly is a great uh, online aggregator of news. And so part of my social media strategy is to not only share my own unique and original content, but to also be able to curate other content. So if there's um you know, good content for the audience that is looking at your school, you can share that and become the authority and the place that they come to find that curated content. So there's just a lot of different ways that you can leverage that. And for $240, you can subscribe to all these different tools for the year. So, um, you know, I had a balance of $113. I'd spend $100 at Fiverr. Fiverr is a freelance marketplace where you can get gigs up to five, you know, for $5 each. Um, the idea here is that if there's anything that you need from a marketing standpoint, whether it's a, you know, on hold voicemail by a professional voiceover talent, if you needed somebody to copy and paste content from your view book into your website and edit it, if you needed a small logo developed, Fiverr is a place that you can go to really get a lot of this done in a very, very cost effective way. And so, um, you know, with $100, you can get 20 gigs. I've purchased, you know, eight hours of transcription for audio that I've had meetings for $40. And uh, it's a very affordable way to go to get some needs that you have without having to, you know, go someplace else that, that might charge you a lot more. And then with my balance, I would go to Starbucks, buy a couple cups of coffee for your team and, and do some planning for your planning session. And so that really kind of gets us to the end of the $2,500 of of how I would spend that if I had that $10 a day for every business day along the way. But I think the thing you've got to remember is that content doesn't just happen. You have to have a plan, you have to do the work, and you have to keep up on it. So a couple exercises that as you go away from this, and we've got a little bit of time here to, to have some questions here at the end, and I know that uh, Sean's been kind of keeping track of those, but three exercises as we kind of get ready to talk about those questions. What Think through the ideas for content based upon what the prospects want. You know, what are the questions that your prospects want and what are the answers that you have that you can share with them? So think about that. Spend some time with your team and kind of work through that. Do that question of what are the 50 questions people ask us and then start developing your content based on that. And how can you create this original content that your prospects are going to consume? What tools that I've shown you today are most effective or what tools do you feel like could be utilized that you and your team could utilize the most, um, whether it's video or whether it's a blog post or whether it's infographic. How can you create that original content? And then what are the resources that you're gonna need to be able to get that content and to manage that content from this point forward? It's one thing to have a plan, but if you don't have the resources or the other means to execute on it, it's gonna be very challenging and you're gonna get frustrated. And so really, I encourage you to kind of think through these three exercises and, uh, and, and kind of go from there. And so I'm going to kind of move it over now to kind of the questions and answers and to kind of talk about, you know, how do you want to utilize content? How, what do you think about, you know, this type of budget and, and is it feasible for your school? So Sean, do we have any questions that anyone has, has proposed yet? Thank you, Bart. Yeah, we'll cover the questions now. 
I request everyone to put your questions in the question boxes. It's right there on your GoToWebinar panel. Every question you've had about content marketing, we are ready to address those. I have the first ones here. So the first one's by David Hotkoff. He says, uh, what are the benefits of Snagit compared to Screenocast or Screenomatic? Similar or does Snagit have advantages over them? I don't have a lot of experience with the other two that you've uh, that you've mentioned. Um, one thing I like about Snagit is is the cost effectiveness, and the, it's both a PC and Mac platform, um, and it, it does tend to um, have uh, Camtasia is a, is a relative of of screen cat of um, of of that particular tool, and so I like it for those those reasons. Um, you might be able to use those other tools just as effectively. I think the the, the main point that I want to make is to make sure that you're using those types of tools to you know, create that content that you're going to be able to share. And so at the end of the day, it might be a Coke versus Pepsi type of thing. But the more important thing is to create some kind of screencast that will help communicate to your end user and your prospective student something that they need to do and how to do it. All right. I hope that answers it for you, David. Uh, we have the next one by Stephanie, Stephanie Specchio. She says, how do you handle accessibility for the website? Yeah, that's a great question, and, and we, uh, we've been looking at different ways to do that. In the last few months, we've kind of landed on a, um, a third-party tool. Uh, what I've found is that a lot of people will use, um, use a lot of these tools that can give you a report on accessibility for your website, but what happens is that re the report, you just end up doing so much work to kind of keep up on it. Uh, we actually found a, a, a third party that's called AudioEye. It's AudioEye.com. They have a product and a service What they will go in and, uh, and uh, you install their widget on your website and then as part of their subscription, which is about ten to $15,000 a year, they will keep your uh, website accessibility friendly and up to date. They constantly go in and will update it um, and, and keep things uh, clean and up to date. We just installed that on two new websites that we've recently launched and I, if you want to go see what they look like, um, they're in the process of it's it's a it's a it's a process to kind of get it moving, um, and so it takes a few months to kind of get up to running. So they might not be to full process, but one is Anderson.edu, is a uh, is one site that's closer to being fully accessible. That I think they're in phase three now of of that, and then we just launched AntiochCollege.edu yesterday, and you can see kind of they're in phase one, but there's a little accessibility icon on the bottom right corner that you can click on that will basically translate the site into uh, accessibility options. And so we have found in our experience that going with a third party like that is, a, especially if you have a small department, is a lot more cost effective than really trying to keep up with the avalanche of all the changes that need to be made. But can you mention that name again? I think Stephanie couldn't hear it clearly. Yes, it's AudioEye. It's so AudioEye.com. A U D-I-O-E-Y-E dot -E com. All right. I hope you got it, Stephanie. So the next one is from Michaela. She says, What's, what is the effectiveness of something like MailChimp over Constant Contact? Uh, I know Constant Contact is costly monthly, but it allows for easily made graphic layout email. Does MailChimp offer something like this? Yeah, MailChimp is very similar to Constant Contact. Um, in a lot of ways, they're very, very similar. MailChimp has a few... Uh, techniques that I like um, in the sense that you can take an RSS feed and create an automated email out of it. Uh, Constant Contact, and I haven't found very many other ones that allow you to do that, and it allows you to automate your email newsletters quite easily. Um, another thing that I like about uh, that, that I like about MailChimp is that if you have an email list that's smaller than 2,000 per month, it's free. And so um, they, they base their, their charges based on how many subscribers that you have to your email list. And so if you have a, let's say you have a development email list of only 1,500 donors, MailChimp would be a really good way to go because it would be free to, to send out that. And they have the same graphical user interface that, that and templates that, that you would find in a constant contact. And, and again, like I said, they're very similar and that might be a Pepsi versus Coke type of thing, again, just based on your preference. But I do think that there's just a few features that MailChimp has that kind of causes me to lean in that direction. All right, uh, next one's from Sarah, Sarah Wright. She says, how do we harness these tools while waiting for an enrollment-driven website to be developed? That's a great question. Um, that's one of the big challenges of, of not having those three, those three 
elements at the very beginning that I talked about with that three-legged stool. Um, one of the best things that I've that I tell my clients, especially where, when we are working on their website, uh, you know, we're getting ready to start on a couple of enrollment-driven websites, and I encourage them to start creating that content because once you have the website, you're going to have to feed it with content, and if you can get that content developed well before the website goes live, and let's say you got six to twelve months of content kind of in the can and ready to go you're going to be ready to really hit the ground running fast as you're waiting for that website to be developed now if you're not even at the point where you, the website can be developed yet i would encourage you to really figure out how can you get that content on your current website or how can you get that content into your social media channels to make sure that that's being that's that's helping your students all right, uh, the next one's from Pratik. He says, if one were to stick to text-based content and no video, what platforms do you propose to target for promoting an education business? If you on, only do text-based, probably utilizing the blog so that you could show up higher in Google. So that whole notion of writing a blog post each week based on uh, the questions that people are asking, I would start there. And I would promote those heavily in social media using tools like hashtags and and forums and Facebook groups that you could pr promote that content into those channels. I think that um, and then syndicating that content into relevant areas for your audience. That would probably be my strategy. Um, if you cannot do video, I would really try to get that text based content into as many places that it could be discovered as possible. All right, the next one's from Nathan. He says, what's the best way to determine what content your audience wants to hear from you, see from you, outside of asking the individuals within your organization? Well, one thing you can do a lot of times, and I, I've done this myself, is wherever your audience is, whether that's on Facebook or LinkedIn or, or Twitter or Instagram, just ask them. Uh, maybe you even spend some time and, and send out a, a survey you know, incentivize it and say, hey, for all the for all the answers that we get on this this survey, you know, we're going to give you a five dollar Starbucks gift card. And let's say that you were hoping to get, you know, 200 survey results back. I mean, that's a thousand dollars right there just invested in Google or invested in Starbucks gift cards that, you know, that you had everybody reply to you and tell you what kind of content they want because it was going to be worth something to them. So I think asking your audience you know, not asking those internally. I mean, you can certainly ask current students, but asking your prospective audience is another way for you to connect with them, to be authentic with them, and to say, you know what, you are the experts of what you want to hear, what you want to see, what you want to know, and how can we serve you better? Um, asking them, I think, is probably the best way. And then I think also just paying attention. And, you know, that's where Google Trends can help out and just see what are, what do we find are the most common things that people are searching on in Google in our area. And that might also help you kind of discover some things. All right. Then we have another one from Stephanie again. Uh, do you have a favorite tool for chatbots? You know, Stephanie, I'm just looking into that. I don't have anything yet. I wish I could tell you something, but I'm just starting to look into chatbots and, and some of the different tools that are out there available to that. So I wish I could give you an answer, but I don't have uh, one that I've really settled on yet. All right. We have one more from David. Uh, he says, do you know if MailChimp, Constant Contact, or Emma offer video capabilities similar to BombBomb? Uh, they do not. BombBomb is the only tool that I have found that actually will create videos like that on the fly. I mean, certainly with MailChimp, you can do the work to create an animated GIF from a video that you have embedded in MailChimp or Emma or Constant Contact and do something similar, but the amount of work that it will take to do every message, whereas BombBomb, I was able to do about 40, 40 customized messages in about an hour and a half a few weeks ago. I don't think I'd get anywhere close to that if I utilized a tool like MailChimp or Constant Contact or, or Emma, where I had to do the actual work of recording the video, saving the video, uploading the video to YouTube, saving an animated GIF, uploading that to MailChimp, creating the link to YouTube, and, and sending it. Uh, BombBomb just allows you to kind of cut through all that very quickly. Okay, uh, we have another one from Sheila. She says, we use Canva to build social media posts. I love the professional templates, but every stock photo is for $1. And that adds up. Is there a similar product that has more affordable stock photo library built in? I don't know of 
products that have that built in, um, I agree with you. It does get very expensive if you have to utilize the library that's in there. Um, I have found um, I have found several blog posts that if you do a blog post for just free professional, you know, stock photography, uh, there's a lot of tool, a lot of places like Unsplash and um, uh, that you can get some really good high quality stock photography. You might have to do that extra step of grabbing it and placing it into your into your template. You know, it's not as simple as being able to just type it in and and pull it right out of that. But um, there's a lot of really good resources for free um, uh, free stock photography. Um, you, you can also utilize you know Creative Commons as long as you are using it correctly and you are um, you know attributing it the way that it need to. But um, yeah, I think sometimes having to pay a dollar every time that you send out a message is, is going to add up pretty quickly. All right, uh, we have the last one from Shia Stickler. She says, have you looked at JetSense for chat SMS bot coupled with human chat support? I have not looked at that one. I've, I've seen things like that. And I do think that any time that you use a chat bot or you know, these automated text messages, having it a hybrid of some chat bot, but also a human support and being able to have that as part of it is going to keep that authenticity and it's going to help it be a lot more uh, usable for your audience. Because I think if you rely too much on automation, you lose that auto you lose that ability to be authentic and you're really going to chase away a lot of the people that you actually want to build relationships with. Okay, so that's about it. Uh Thank you, Bart, and thank you, everyone, for your time and attention. Hope we could leave you with something useful. The recording to the webinar and Bart's presentation deck will be mailed to you first thing tomorrow. Bart, do you have a closing note here? I think the only thing that I would say is certainly there's been a lot of questions, and, and if you need follow-up on those questions, I've got my contact information on the screen now. Um, you can either do a quick screen capture or I'll leave it up here for a minute or two, but you can certainly email me at kaler at kaler-solutions.com. Uh, you can call me directly. That's my cell phone number. Um, you can go to our website. That's my Twitter handle. You can also find me just by Googling on LinkedIn or anyplace else. There's not a lot of Bart Kalers. And so you can find me that way. Um, also, um, Sean has all my contact information. And if you need to kind of follow up on that, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that, answer any additional questions, talk to you about anything that you have to have that you're currently doing with your enrollment marketing, whether it's developing an enrollment focused website, whether it's developing content for that or being coached in these different things. That's what Kaler Solutions is all about. I would also encourage you that, to subscribe to our email blog. Uh, the, the blog post comes out once a month, once, once a week, I should say, on Mondays and Tuesdays. And um, we regularly write about this type of thing of how can you do things on a very you know, thin budget? How can you do it well? And what are the things that your prospective students are looking for the most? So I encourage you to stay in touch. And uh, it's been an honor to, to be here on the phone with you today. And thank you, Sean, for the opportunity. Thank you again, Bob. Thank you, everyone. And have a great day ahead. I'm going to end this session now. I hope you have got the information about Bart. I'm going to leave it on the screen for a couple of more minutes, and then we'll end the session. Thank you.